Hello and welcome to another C Sharp coding homework exercise in which we are going to create a program that uses array and that allows any number of values between 0 and 10 to be entered. When the user stops entering values, display a frequency distribution bar chart. In other words, we will display how many times each of those numbers was entered in a chart format. We use asterisks to show the number of times each value was entered. If a given number is not entered, no asterisk should appear on that line. In other words, if user doesn't enter one of the numbers, let's say the user doesn't enter number two, then number two will be just blank. There will be no stars and no asterisks. Uh, our application should display error messages if the value outside the if the value is outside of acceptable range uh, or if it's non-numeric. All right, so uh, this is fairly straightforward. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to declare a few variables as usual. So we are supposed to validate the input, so we can do we can create a variable that. Uh, checks whether the input was valid or not. So I'm going to create a boolean called valid input and I'm going to initialize it to false simply because uh, during the program when it, uh, the input is correct I'll change the flag back to true. Um, next I'm going to do a string called input. This is basically the number that the user enters but the input is always in a string format and uh, we will have to check whether the user actually entered a valid integer or not by converting the string to input I mean string to uh, integer but uh, for our purposes we can leave the input in a string format for now another one uh, we will create a string Actually, sorry, uh, we will create a boolean called stop input. This is basically a flag when the user decides to stop inputting any numbers, then this flag will be uh, true. But until then, I'll declare it as false, just like we did the valid input. Now, another variable we need. Now, like I said, we collect the input as a string, but we'll need to convert it to a to an integer down the road. So I can already create a variable uh, of integer type and I'll call it result because we are going to be using the uh, integer try parse and if it passes it, uh, then it will return a boolean. I mean if it doesn't pass it will return false but if the uh, input is actual valid integer then try parse will return the value of that integer into a into a variable and I'll call it result um, not I mean semicolon like that okay so next thing we're going to collect the input so we will do while the uh, it's not stop input in other words while uh, the user wants to keep entering the numbers we will run the program so while not stop input, which right now, remember, we uh, initiated it to false, so it will start running right away. And if the user decides to stop the input, we will set the flag stop input to true and the while loop will exit. Now we need to validate the actual input. This is uh, just uh, going to loop until the user keeps entering the numbers. But now we have to make sure that the numbers that the user enters a valid input. So we will do a do while loop and we will do while uh, while not valid input. So while as long as the user keeps entering invalid input we will try to correct the uh, user and fo force him to actually enter a valid input. So we will ask uh, the user console dot right line. We will all right line. We will ask the user to 
please enter a number between 0 and 10. But the user has to also have a way to quit the program. So it's either the number, keep, uh, the user keeps entering the numbers, or enter Q to exit program. So we are, there's two valid inputs. Either it's numbers uh, or digits 0 to 9 or numbers 0 to 10 or a character Q. So that's why we have it as a string over here. We have a string input because both the digits are uh, the digits are valid uh, input, but also a character is a valid input, except uh, the digits are the input that we will collect and evaluate and make the chart from. And Q is the flag that uh, triggers to exit the program and display the chart. So we will do the input equals console dot readline. So whatever the user enters, we will place into our input variable. So now we have our input, but we don't know if it's correct yet or not. So we need to first check if the user actually entered a number. So if the integer die try parse and the syntax is what we are trying to parse, what string do we are trying to parse as to, into an integer, uh, in our case, it's input. And if we succeed, uh, you cannot see this because uh, the way the IntelliSense is, but uh, if the parsing uh, succeeds, then we will have our result. We will have our number and we will pass it into our result variable. So if the user entered number, it will be passed into our result variable of type of integer. If the user did not enter number, if he entered alphanumeric character, then it, this integer try parse will return a false for uh, an indicating that the user did not enter number. So this is our if statement. So, and in it, now we know if this passes, then we know the user entered a valid number. So we can do if result is greater than zero and the result is less than 10. Remember the numbers are supposed to be between zero and 10. So basically one through nine. It, the exercise doesn't say whether it's included zero and included 10. So I assume it is not, I assume it's excluded. That's why greater than zero and less than 10. But if you want to include them, then I simply do greater or equal to zero and greater than uh, less than equal to 10. So we have our, if this passes, then we know the valid input is true, that the user entered valid number. So we will do valid input equals true. We will trigger the flag as true. Because remember, we do we not do while loop while the input is uh, not valid. So if the if the input is invalid, if this doesn't pass, or if this doesn't pass, then we'll, it comes over here and it uh, then it goes to another iteration and asks, please enter another uh, another number. And over here, we will now have to verify whether the user actually entered Q. Remember, uh, the input allows for numbers or Q. So if it comes over here and it says, and the user enters Q, the integer try parse will uh, return false because you cannot convert Q, character Q to an integer, but character Q is actually a valid input. So we have to verify that separately. We have to do, even though if this doesn't pass, even if the user entered a, did not enter a number, if he entered a character, we have to make sure that the user did not actually enter Q. So it's very simple, we will do if input, and we'll convert it to upper, 
simply because uh, that way we don't, we can check whether the user entered capital Q or lowercase Q. I mean uh, uppercase Q or lowercase Q. So if to upper and dot equals if it equals uh, Q, then we have a valid uh, input and the user wants to exit. So we still the valid input is still true because Q is a valid input. But also the user now wants to stop the input. We are going now to while loop over here. User is done entering the numbers. So stop input is also true. So when it comes to here, uh, then it comes for another while loop iteration and it says no, the stop input is now true, so we are not going to ask for any more numbers. Alright, so um, now we need to display an error message. Uh, basically, if the user did not enter valid input, we need to display a uh, you didn't enter valid input. So if if after all this, if after these two conditional statements, the valid input is still false, if valid input is uh, false, then we will display console dot right line, and we will uh, something like invalid input the value want uh, sorry want be counted in other words we will not enter it into our into our chart all right so uh, this is our input and this is how our, how our program is going to run or how long again we are waiting for the user to uh, enter Q to stop the input. While that happens, we keep asking user for, a, for an input or uh, entering numbers. However, we uh, put it into a do while loop because we want to verify that the user entered valid number or a Q. So if the user did not enter a valid number, or actually if the user di didn't enter number, then over here we'll still check whether the user actually entered Q. And if not, then we will display the uh, invalid input message and do another try to for the user to enter more numbers however if the user entered number then we come over here and check whether the user entered a number greater than zero or less than 10. if not then it simply comes over here we, if it comes over here we already know that it and the user entered number so over here we know the input will not be q anymore because it's a number so it comes over here, invalid input is still, the valid input is still false. So it enters, uh, it uh, displays the invalid input message. All right, so this is our input. Now let's output the actual chart. And we will do that in part two of this exercise. So stick around and watch the next video. Take care.